Hi, this is Dr. Victoria Skirbo, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. I'd like to speak to you today about um, May from a both astrological and Kabbalistic viewpoint. And so we're going to start with the Kabbalah. Okay, so here we have the Tree of Life. And on the Tree of Life, I have the path that is being activated by the numerology of the month of May. And we get that numerology by adding the month uh, five with the universal year, which is 10. And we get a 15-6 vibration. That 15-6 vibration is connected to the devil card in the tarot. Let's move over to that and bring it in a little. Okay, and so here we have the devil card. And this is a interesting card um, symbolically on many levels so let's talk about it here we have the uh, devil with his horns shaggy feet his claws holding a torch see the torch there um, behind the man and uh, what's interesting is the torch is burning but it sheds no light and we have the man and the woman which is very close to the position of the man and the woman in the um, the lover's card. But instead of a mountain between them and in a beautiful garden, they find themselves in the darkness. And they are chained to this pillar. And this pillar symbolizes um, for the three-dimensional reality, uh, our manifested world. And they have chains around their neck. Um, and horns on their head and tails and they could if they wished to take the chains off their neck they're not really they're loosely there and so there's a sense of being imprisoned in the darkness and yet there is also the choice of um, the light if they take the action to uh, remove themselves from their chains okay so that is part of the symbolism of this card, the devil card. Now, what's interesting about the 15-6 vibration is that the base number is a 6. And the 6 as a base number is the number of love and the conditions we put on love. It also has to do with our responsibility, our ability to respond to life. How do you choose to respond to life? Do you remain imprisoned in a prison of your own making? Or will you be able to free yourself? So I'm going to bring you over now back to, sorry about this, this makes you a little dizzy, the Tree of Life. And here we have this path right here, um, highlighted in orange, and I'll bring you closer into that. Okay, there we have May 2017, 15 6, and the Devil card. Now in the Tree of Life, this is the path that connects Hode to Tipareth. Tipareth is located in the very center of the tree, is associated with the sun, and then we have Hode over here circled in the orange, and that's associated with the planet Mercury. So this has to do with the core of who we are, the sun, and uh, how we take in information, or how we receive information, uh, Mercury. Remember, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. And in mythology, Mercury is the messenger god. And so M Mercury goes to the gods, is able to go to the sun. Also, interestingly enough, go into the hell realms uh, from mythology and, uh, and bring us the information that we need. So if we look at this, if I'll pull it out a little, and we'll see how I've overlaid the chakras here. And the two chakras being activated this month are the heart and the solar plexus via the connection of this 15-6 uh, pathway. Um, the heart really deals with, I'll bring it in again, with what is at the core of who we are, what's in our heart, uh, what brings us joy. Uh, Tipareth is all about joy. There's a childlike wonder and a childlike joy. Um, the... the uh, the thing that Jesus said, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must become like a child. The kingdom of heaven is is really Tibereth, and becoming like a child is becoming childlike, as opposed to childish, which is the other way we can go with this. 
And so we have the heart and the solar plexus connected. And our solar plexus is our personal will. And so this is really a journey of allowing you to take actions within three-dimensional reality because the solar plexus is a lower chakra. It is. Uh, it has to do with our functioning efficiently in, in the physical world. And so here we have... Uh, can we take action on what is in our hearts and how do we get there? So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So I want to talk a little bit more about the 15-6 path. Um, this is a path that is associated with the sign of Capricorn. Capricorn is an interesting archetype in that it is, um, it has a, a mythological, I guess we could say, creature as uh, its its emblem or its symbol, that is the sea goat, that has the uh, the upper uh, body of a goat and the lower body of a fish, and this is symbolic of the fact that Capricorn is uh, has plunged the depths and reached the heights. Now, if we look at Capricorn and where it sits in the chart, in a natural chart, it sits right at the top, and that line from um, the top, very top of the chart to the very bottom of the chart, from the MC to the Nadir, is uh, the line of spirit and how spirit both incarnates into this world and exits out of this world. So Capricorn is a very spiritual sign, although most people uh, see it as a very earthly sign. It is also about initiation and an initiation into the greater world. And so in Capricorn, we kind of take... Uh, control of our lives and we put ourselves out in the big wide world to make it uh, hopefully a better place and so uh, Capricorn is a uh, much maligned and misunderstood sign but it is a great spiritual uh, sign and what I want to say is that in this path we can sometimes get caught up in the fact that there is nothing beyond the physical realm and this is an opportunity for us to wake up to that. Now, Pluto is now transiting um, Capricorn, and that's part of the transformation process that Capricorn goes through as Pluto moves through that sign. The realization of the spiritual uh, responsibility that we have to each other and the planet and everybody that we um, share this planet with. And so, Along with, okay, it's Pluto and Capricorn, the uh, breaking down of structures that are oppressive. You know, ultimately, it's not about Capricorn only, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it has to do with the balance between the inner and outer world, Capricorn and Cancer, our physical reality and our emotional reality, and finding a place of balance in that. And so we have opportunities to do that this month. So that's all I think I want to say at this time about the month of May and the Kabbalistic connections to uh, May. What I want to say is that, also want to say, is that uh, tomorrow, today's May 1st actually, tomorrow, Tuesday, if you are in the Wareham, Massachusetts area, we'll, we will be having our monthly Astrology of the Month series. Of course, it'll be about May. So uh, you don't have to be an, an astrological aficionado. You can be a, a, an absolute beginner, or you can be uh, pretty well versed in it. You will all get something out of this experience. And so that begins at 7 p.m. Eastern Time here in uh, Wareham, Massachusetts. Stop by if you're in the neighborhood, and uh, you'll be glad you did. If you have your natal chart, bring it. If you don't, we'll make one up for you, and uh, you can follow along. So... Uh, I will see you again uh, next month when we get to talk about the Kabbalistic and astrological aspects of the month of June. Have a great day. See you next month. Bye.